Welcome back to From the Bookshelf for another book club episode. Today we are going to be looking at chapter 13 of City of Bones. But before we get started, don't forget to like and comment on this video and go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can get notified for any upcoming videos for the book club series as well as the weekly download and any new things that we have going on. So as I said, we're going to be doing chapter 13, which is the memory of whiteness. We're going to start on uh, the beginning of the chapter on page 227. So in this section, we see Magnus kind of um, flip-flopping on what he's saying. He says at the end of the previous chapter that her mother, Jocelyn, was the one who went to Magnus to have her have the sight taken away from her so that she doesn't remember the things that um, she's seeing within the shadow world. And so, you know, Clary's getting upset, asking why she did this, um, why her mother did this to her. And Magnus says, I don't know. It's not my job to ask questions. I do what I get paid to do. So I'm not sure, like, it seems like everything out of Magnus's mouth in this whole scene at the party is like a lie. Like every other thing he's saying is not the truth. He makes it up. He, he says one thing and then he says another thing. It's like, how are we supposed to trust Magnus at this point? Like, he's obviously a huge part of the series and um, a huge part of the books and the lives of the Shadowhunters. But here we are first meeting him and he's not really a trustworthy character as it seems. Like he appears to be just um, saying kind of whatever he wants to get him out of this situation, you know, say something, get him out. They don't like that. Say another thing, then they'll go. It's just like he can't decide um, what he wants to say and he kind of just makes it up as he goes along. And it's not very trustworthy at this point, but um, we'll see more of Magnus later on and um, of course, you know, that's... I think that's just a kind of a defense mechanism, but it's just interesting that he's like, he's supposed to be this like huge character that everyone loves and trusts, but our first meeting him of him is very untrustworthy. Uh, let's move on. Our next page is gonna be a 229. So Magnus is talking to Clary about, um, about Jocelyn's visits to him with Clary to have the uh, spell redone every so often as it starts to fade. And he says, just the fact that she was here meant the spell had started to fade. And in fact, we were due for another visit about a month ago. I even came by your house when I got back from Tanzania, but Jocelyn said that you two had a fight and you'd run off. She said she'd call, call on me when you came back but an elegant shrug, she never did. I find this interesting that um, Magnus says that she was supposed to go see him to have the memory um, spell redone a month prior, but she hadn't. And it was only just recently that Magnus came by and they had a fight because clearly this fight that they're talking about is the one um, that started it all, right? Right before everything went crazy. But why did Jocelyn wait to go see him? Why didn't she go the month prior when the visit was due, you know, before he went out of town? Like, it's like, if Jocelyn's so worried about Clary finding out about the shadow world, why wait to have um, the spell redone, knowing that she's most likely gonna start remembering things and seeing things and causing this trouble? So uh, it seems like for Jocelyn, who's so worried about Clary finding out about the shadow world, that she's not very careful about how she goes about it. So it's just um, kind of the thing about Jocelyn. She's so careful, but then she doesn't go and do what she should do to keep Clary from knowing things that she doesn't want her to know about. So I don't know. So let's move on to page 231. So we have two things on this page that I found of note. So uh, at this one, Clary is after Magnus is telling her that he, you know, took away kind of like her memories of the shadow world as she was seeing them. She says, all my life, I felt like there was something wrong with me, something missing or damaged. Now I know I didn't damage you. It was Magnus's turn to interrupt. His lips curled back angrily to show sharp white teeth. 
every teenager in the world feels like that, feels broken or out of place, different somehow, Worldly, royalty mistakenly born into a family of peasants. The difference is your case is that it's true. You are different. So, I mean, she's not really saying she's damaged or that he damaged her, but he did do something to her. He took away her sight and her memories of the sight, of what she's seeing with the sight. So he did do something to her. He did cause her to be different. He did cause something to change so that she was no longer who she's supposed to be. So just saying, oh, just like every other teenager, every other teenager feels that way. You're not special, but she is because there is something wrong. There is something different about the way she's feeling because she's supposed to be the shadow hunter. She's supposed to be able to see things. And it's like, she knows it, but she can't put her finger on what it is. And Magnus is just trying to, I don't know, take that away from her somehow. I'm not really sure what I mean by that, but it's almost like he's saying, well, I didn't do anything wrong. And I don't think he did. He didn't damage her. And I don't think that's really the issue. The issue is she feels different because she is different she's not just a normal teenager and her feelings aren't because she's just a normal teenager she feels different and like something has been wrong because things have been wrong and I don't think it's fair of Magnus to get mad at her over this and tell her well every other teenager feels that way but she is different <laughs> I mean we, we see that like it's clear by the events that have happened so far and then the, the second part down at the end of the, the page. So we have Clara getting upset um, about her mother um, taking away the, her sight and her memories of it. And Magnus says this about it. Like he gets upset at her for feeling this way. He says, Magnus' expression was closed. I'm over it, he said. I think you get my point. Different isn't better, Clarissa. Your mother was trying to protect you. Don't throw it back in her face. And yes, in Jocelyn's way, she was trying to protect her daughter, but it's also not fair to tell Clary, you're not allowed to get upset. You're not allowed to feel upset about your mother for doing this. Yes, she is allowed to be upset. Her mother lied to her her whole life, didn't tell her about who she was, what she was, that she was different and that her feelings of how she felt different and kind of like out of place weren't just regular. It was for a reason. And her mother lied to her about that. She kept that secret. She didn't give her the choice to decide. So Clary has the right to be upset. I mean, yes, she should, you know, get the chance to talk to her mother about it and talk it through and the two of them can get past it. But to say that she has no right to be upset with her mother, I don't think is really fair either because she is allowed that opinion, especially since her mother did keep these secrets from her even if she was trying to protect Clary, I think at some point Clary should have had the choice to decide these for herself, to understand who she was, to know who she was. And it wasn't really fair that her mother didn't give her the chance to understand that on her own. And that she's just kind of thrown into it. Um, so let's move on. Our next thing is on 232. So this I find an interesting thing. So we see this. Let me just let me just read real quick. So Alec looked impressed. I didn't know all that. Jace hopped on the windowsill and swung his legs. Not all of us sleep through history lessons. I do not. Oh, yes, you do. You drool on the desk besides. Shut up, said Magnus. But he said it quite mildly. He hooked his fingers between two pages of the book and came over to Clary. So... Here we see Jason and Alec kind of bickering. You know, Jace is saying, oh, you uh, fall asleep during history and drool on your desk. And he's like, no, I don't. Yes, you do. And Magnus is over here, like, telling Jace, shut up, stop it. And I find this interesting for those who, um, who know about uh, the books and this relationship that's coming, that Magnus is over here uh, defending Alec. And they don't even know each other yet. He's like... I think this is like the first spot where we kind of see that Magnus might have some feelings, even if it's just like, like, like first meeting somebody, uh, kind of like having those at first sight kind of feelings. 
but he's over here defending Alec and he doesn't even know Alec. He's just some random shadow hunter, right? So uh, I find that really interesting and I kind of like that, that you see that so early on in the book, like before they even really know each other or anything about each other. So let's move to 235. So we have this, um, this part here where Magnus is talking about the uprising and the fact that he was there and he had a part in it. But so we see, we see this, um, and only a fool would get between Valentine and his revenge. Is that what you think he's after revenge? Said Jace. I would guess so. He suffered a great defeat and he hardly seemed, seems the type of man to suffer defeat gracefully. So, um, so he kind of changes this to this, the, uh, the tense of his words as he's saying them. And so the clave is all under the impression that Valentine's dead. Even as of right now, um, just because our little group of shadow hunters believe that Valentine is alive, the entire clave and the entire down world believe that Valentine is dead, that he died. So the fact that um, Magnus makes this little change in his tense to um, current, to like he seems or he, he doesn't seem the type to do this. So he's saying it as if he were still alive. Like he knows that he's still alive. Does he know? Is this proof that Magnus knew that he was alive? I mean, Jocelyn was clearly running from him. Does, so does that mean he's known all these years that Valentine was alive and he never said anything? Never did anything? Just, just, just something to think about. Um, let's move on to page 237. So we have two things that I wanna talk about here on 237. So Magnus has been um, basically trying to get rid of the shadow hunters since they showed up at his party. And so they're kind of like walking through the party, probably to go find um, Simon and Isabel. So one of the fairies is making Alec nervous because uh, according to him, one of them pinched him as he went by, if you know what I mean. And um, and Jace makes a comment that if, well, this, this fairy is interested in Alec, he's probably not interested in his sister. And Magnus says, not necessarily. Fairies aren't particular. Jace curled his lips scornfully in the warlock's direction. You still here? <laughs> My question too, like if he's so intent on getting rid of them, why is he just following them around the party? Is he just following them either to make sure they leave or is he following them because he wants to continue talking to a certain shadow hunter, if you know what I mean. So I just think that's funny for someone who's like been trying to get rid of them this whole time. Now all of a sudden he's kind of like following them around. <laughs> but uh, so let's move down to the bottom of the page to this part with Isabel. She has clearly been drinking and she comes up to her brother and Jace and Clary and she says, no, Alec, Isabel said irritably. Not like that. He's a rat. She's drunk, said Jace, beginning to turn away in disgust. I'm not, Isabel said indignantly. Well, maybe a little, but that's not the point. So, um, so in this scene, we have Isabel, who's clearly been drinking, clearly drunk. Well, let's, she's what, 16? So, I mean, the fact that she's drinking to the point of getting drunk at 16 while they're technically out on patrol. So they're supposed to be out working and, you know, hunting demons and all of that. But she's getting drunk while doing it. Doesn't seem very professional or very shadow hunterly. And um, also the fact that while she was standing over there drinking, she let Simon drink one of the fairy drinks and she turned him into, or she didn't, she, and he turned into a rat. He turns into a literal rat. Remember previously in the last episode where I thought it was so funny that Jace made the comment that, oh, you're right. He's not a weasel. He's a rat. Well, he turns into a rat, like into a literal rat. And that's why that joke was so funny. But here's Isabel drinking while she's technically working you know and supposed to be doing shadow hunter work it's just not a very good look if you ask me so let's move 
so let's move on to page 239. We have this part where Clary is, you know, talking to Simon as he's a rat. And she says, oh, poor baby, poor Simon. It'll be fine, I promise. I wouldn't feel too sorry for him, Jay said. That's probably the closest he ever gotten to second base. As Clary's like hugging him, you know, to her, to her and stuff. And, you know, Jace, he's being a jerk. He's kind of being an ass. And that's, you know, it's one of Jace's uh, qualities is to kind of be rude, especially to Simon. But, you know, like, he's not wrong. She's kind of like being like, oh, poor little Simon. I feel so bad. It's like Simon put himself in this situation. He's over here flirting with Isabel and all of that. And he did something stupid without thinking. And Clary's acting like, I don't know. But I feel like he's right. It's probably the the closest Simon ever been to having Clary's undivided and loving attention. He just might kind of be saying it in the wrong way and just pissing everybody off. So, I mean, it's kind of like Jace doesn't know what to say and when to say it because he's always getting himself into trouble with what he's saying. <laughs> um, but that's enough of that one. Let's move on to page 240. So here is Isabel kind of getting like upset about the whole situation. So um, Jace is saying they can't leave with Simon as this rat. And she says, you'd be happy to leave in if it weren't for her, Isabel said, managing to interject the single syllable word with enough venom to poison an elephant. She stopped off, her, flou her skirt flouncing around her hips. I can't believe she let you drink that blue drink, Clary said to rat Simon. Now you see what you get for being so shallow. So in this, uh, in this spot, it's kind of like Izzy doesn't care about the consequences of her actions. She was over here too busy, you know, kind of flirting and um, messing with Simon and drinking. And he gets into a mess and she doesn't want to deal with it. It's like he's only in this mess because, well, also because, you know, he was following Clary, but also because of her like she wasn't really paying attention or doing what shadow hunters are supposed to do and it got him turned into a rat for it so it's kind of like isabel if you're gonna do something you need to realize actions have consequences and that's kind of how i feel about that um particular scene let's move on to our next spot which is going to be on 244. so we have this part where um Clary and the rest are leaving and Magna says this to Clary before she goes keep in mind that when your mother fled from the shadow world it wasn't the monsters she was hiding from not the warlocks not the wolfmen not the fair folk not even the demons themselves it was them it was the shadow hunters and while in a sense Magnus is correct he's also wrong I mean she wasn't running from the downworlders that is correct but she wasn't actually running from the shadow hunters themselves. She was running from Valentine. She uh, stole the cup from Valentine so he couldn't use the mortal cup uh, for his, his plans. And she ran from him. But it was Valentine she was running from, not necessarily shadow hunters as a whole. While she did have some issues with them, she wasn't necessarily running and hiding from them. So in this, we kind of see um, Magnus's judgment on the whole situation and he's being just a little bit judgy going into this situation and um it's kind of a way it's and in this we kind of see that the down world also has a bias while the shadow hunters are biased against down worlders and think shadow hunters are better i think down worlders also have that bias on the opposite and there's a lot of times throughout the books that downworlders are doing the same kind of thing towards the shadow hunters that they claim that shadow hunters all do against them so i just find that interesting to think about uh, let's move on to page 245. so here we see alec talking to isabel after uh simon disappears and it turns out he was um taken by the vampires so what we see is Alec kind of talking to his sister and uh and this is 
So what we see is Alec talking to his sister, and this is what he says. It's not your fault, Alec was saying. He sounded weary, as if he'd been through this sort of thing with his sister before. Clary wondered how many boyfriends she turned into rats by accident. But it ought to teach you not to go to so many downworld parties, he added. They're always more trouble than they're worth. Isabel sniffed loudly. If anything had happened to him, I don't know what I would have done. So... Alec is telling Isabel, well, it's not your fault he's been turned into a rat. It's not your fault that this all is happening. Don't beat yourself up. You're not to blame for any of it. But isn't she actually to blame in a sense? Like, so she was too busy having fun at this party, having drinks and acting. I don't, I'm not really sure because we weren't really there to see it, but she was supposed to be watching out for Simon. She was supposed to keep an eye on him as a mundane. And he turned into a rat at this party. And Alex over here like, it's okay. It's not your fault. It kind of is her fault. And I think it doesn't help her to tell her it's not her fault and to act like she's done nothing wrong. Because as we saw before, she's unwilling to take responsibility for the consequences of her actions in the, uh, the last part with Simon as well. So... You shouldn't be telling her nothing's her fault. So, because by doing that, you're just teaching her she can kind of do whatever she wants and it's not going to be a problem. You didn't do anything wrong. You can just continue doing what you want. But that's just my, my opinion on that. Um, okay, so let's move on to page 250. Here we have Jason Clary going back to Magnus's after they realize um, Simon's missing to figure out what's going on. He tells them that the vampires took them, took him, right? And that they have to go get him. And it said, and he says, well, when he turns back into a human, they'll still kill him, but you might have a few more hours. Then you have to help us, Clary said to the warlock, otherwise Simon will die. Magnus looked her up and down with a sort of clinical sympathy. They all die, dear, he said. You might as well get used to it. I feel like this is just another instance of like the Magnus we first see. He's not very helpful. In fact, he's very unhelpful to the shadow hunters until uh, he starts his relationship with um, Alec. I feel like he doesn't really do much to help them. He kind of gives them the runaround previously when they're talking about Clary and her memories. Now here he is like, well, the vampires have Simon. Better, better just uh, get used to the idea that he's going to die. Like, you can't help him. He's just going to die. It's like, that's helpful, Magnus. Thanks. Um, I don't know why. It's like rereading this a few, several times. I like. I feel like um, Magnus doesn't really become like that beloved character until like at least the second book. I mean, there's um, the part in this one where he comes and he helps Alec later on, but... Other than that, he doesn't really seem to care about anyone but Magnus. And he's very unhelpful, as we can see. So, um, <laughs> well, that's it for uh, this video. On the next one, we will be going into chapters 14 and 15. So check back uh, later this week and we will get into that. Thank you for coming by and I have to say about uh, this section of City of Bones. If you have any thoughts, opinions, or anything that I might have missed in this chapter, go ahead and leave that down in the comments and uh, we can talk about it. So thanks again and I'll see you next time.